order this uh, Monday, July 25th meeting of the Montpelier Planning Commission. Uh, first, we have to approve the agenda, so we can get a motion for that when you're ready. I move to approve the agenda. I have a motion from Ariane. Do you have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, we'll give it to Jeff. So, motion from Ariane. Uh, Second from uh, Jeff to approve the agenda. Those in favor of approving the agenda say aye. 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 Okay. So I think I heard enough eyes. Uh, agenda approved. And moving on. Um, comments from the chairs. The next thing on the agenda. Uh, I don't have anything. I hope everyone got to take a look at the arts and culture chapter um we'll be going over that later uh but i i don't have i don't have any news here um so i'm going to move on to the general business unless somebody, does anyone have an update other than mike has some updates coming up but does anybody else have anything before i move on from the comments from the chair okay general business is there does not appear to be anyone from the public here to discuss anything that's not on the agenda. So we'll move through the general business and uh, we'll get the update on the council meeting from July 20th from Mike. All right. So this is pretty quick. We did have a council meeting. We put a couple of items on. So Ariane and I were appointed to the CVRPC. So that step is taken care of. And we also submitted our recommendation to approve the contract to SE Group. That also got approved. So I'm in the process of drafting the contract. Uh, I've been in touch with them. And we've, we've got a meeting, just staff and their technical team are going to be meeting on the 8th of August um, to start laying things out and um, setting up, getting basically getting the project started and rolling. So it's good news that they want to um, kind of jump on that right away. So that's taken care of. I'm still trying to do some follow-up on what was up with the planning commission appointments. I didn't see that on the agenda. I don't know if it was because there weren't any applicants, but uh, I've got to reach out again to Mary uh, to ask What's the deal? I also, there also was a, a student who was interested in applying. I don't know if he didn't apply or um, what was the issue, but he was supposed to get appointed as well, but he didn't end up, that didn't end up getting appointed. So um, there's only one meeting in August. I think it's like August 20th. Don't quote me. It'll be a Wednesday somewhere in that time frame. Um, so I'll see if we've got appointments coming up at that time. But if you know people who are interested, um, have them fill out an application and I'll try to make sure that we've got that um, rolling at um, the manager's office. So other than that, um, unless people have questions on some other things, that's where we're at. Thanks, Mike. Um, I'm also very aware that um, we're imbalanced as far as gender ratios. So hopefully we get um, um, a female person interested. Um, but there's not a lot we can do about that. Uh, okay, so uh, the next thing on the agenda is just to take a look at the arts and culture chapter. I mean, I plan to just do a discussion. I take it that everyone um, had a chance to read it. I know that I was late and getting out to everyone. I only give you like a day. Um, did, did people get to take a look at it yet? I see one. No. Yeah. I, I mean, I didn't get to take a look at it, but I, I probably feel like this is the area I have the least expertise of all the, um, so do you want to, I mean, just give us a summary or I don't know, maybe other people. Um, have done. Sorry to jump in. Yeah, whatever you guys want. I mean, I, I can give a few minutes right now. I can also do a broad. I mean, I, I won't read the things. I know people haven't liked that in the past, but I could give a broad overview if, if people find that helpful. Whatever you want. Any opinions? 
Yeah, overview would be nice. Okay. Go ahead. All right, um, so I'll share screen then. Um, so uh, here it is. I I added to what we already had for the most part. There what there were some redundancies. Um, the aspirations and goals stayed pretty much the same because I was I I basically felt like I could fit everything that I could find from the. Um, public arts master plan into what we already had there for goals and things. That master plan is not as broad as what our chapter was, was being conceived as, as in um, it's all about, that's all about public art, but we also, you know, wanted to touch on some culture stuff. Um, so it, I don't know, like there was a whole lot in this first aspiration, which is Montpelier will support public art and thoroughly integrate it into our urban landscape. I modified that slightly from what was before. Um, the thoroughly integrate part was to capture kind of what the master plan was getting at. The, the public, when I say master plan, in this case, I'm gonna be talking about the public arts master plan. Um, the public arts master plan really it had a lot of emphasis on cramming public art everywhere, like in the alleys, on the back of buildings, um, anywhere we, that we can put it, which I think is a wonderful idea. Um, and there's a lot in there about, you know, using the bridges and, and um, making Langdon Street full of art all the time. Um, so that's why I feel like just thoroughly integrated because I thought that captured the spirit of what they were getting at and, and a lot of that uh, plan. Um, our goals are basically the same as what was there before. Uh, the first one is the city will be uh, a leader or, you know, this could be Montpelier will be a leader in creating and developing lasting public art installations and prominent. I, I put prominent and overlooked spaces, again, trying to capture what they were getting at in the public arts master plan, because I think this originally said prominent, but I was wanting to go along with what they wanted. Now I, now, now that I'm looking at it, we could change that to just everywhere. Uh, <laughs> but uh, at any rate, um, the strategies, uh, I left the strategies we had. I um, fleshed some of them out based on what was discussed, but it's, you know, an emphasis on putting public art installations into every city financed project. Um, um, as far as the doable things like this second strategy, I'm not sure is anything specific. I don't know if it's specific enough, but then there was, there were some funding strategies, um, which is I'm following what the master plan said about that. Um, cause I don't know anything about how we plan to try to fund art, but there was, there was plenty in there. So I included, there's this public art fund, which I believe now exists. So Mike is nodding. Yeah. Um, and then, and I wrote as dictated by the uh, Montpelier Public Arts Master Plan because they had pages and pages about how they want to use this fund, how, you know, the administration of the fund, there's, there's city policies about it. So I just kind of incorporated by reference just that aspect of the plan for as far as the public art fund. Um, some of these could be reordered. Um, like I threw this to create more installations that come alive at night. That was something they had. Um, I didn't know anywhere else to put it, but I don't, I don't know if it's that good of a strategy. Maybe we can improve that. Uh, another thing they had about funding was to start pursuing state and national grants. I don't think we're at a stage where we're trying to do that yet. So I, it seemed like a good thing for the, for the city plan though, because it's, it is going to be like a, the next few years kind of thing. Um, one thing that they wanted to do was inventory all public art in Montpelier. So I included that. Um, there were some policies that they wanted adopted that were kind of administrative. I thought that made sense for a strategy. Um, so, so I put those in. I don't know. I haven't kept up on whether any of these have actually become policy since that master plan was adopted. Mike's saying no. no. So that might be a good thing just to have in there. Um, 
another idea that they had in the longer term was to have a policy of contributing 1% of the budget for all capital projects be dedicated to public art. I uh, thought that was a good funding source. Um, and uh, they had some marketing stuff they wanted to do. And then they also wanted to explore some new revenue strategies down the road. They had some specific ideas. I went ahead and just left them out though, because I thought being open-ended might be useful because um, uh, there might be other ideas. I, but um, some of their ideas are things like uh, taking a portion of the mills and rooms tax, the local option tax revenue that we have for that and dedicating it to public art. So things like that, but I didn't, I didn't specify. I just left it open to exploring new revenue strategies, which we've done that in other chapters for other things. Um, okay, so our second goal was to help encourage and promote temporary public art. And these were actually useful categories because the public arts master plan does not split it up like our goals do, like permanent installations versus temporary, but they had plenty of temporary and like, like it, it, it split itself up pretty easily when I went to go do this. So for the temporary type stuff, um, facilitate uh, temporary public art displays, um, temporarily or yeah, periodically make public space available for temporary. This is includes the empty storefronts idea. Um, that we had talked about before and that's in the, the master plan. Um, there's the whole, there's, there's a bit dedicated to Langdon Street, like I said before. So I put Langdon Street in there as a temporary because I think Langdon Street's mostly thought of as something that's going to rotate its appearance um, a bit. So that's why I put it in the temporary. Um, there were ideas in that in the master plan relating to doing earthwork displays in Hubbard Park which I took to be a temporary thing because something that would kind of fall apart over time. Um, there was an idea to have a soapbox stage. This one seems an easy, like when we, when we go to do our strategies, you know, we have the, how difficult is it to implement? This one seems really easy. Just a, a little stage somewhere in a public space downtown, like in front of city hall, for instance, where that would be the place where performers could go and, and, and do their thing. Um, and we may attract more people in doing that by having that available um, because dynamic art is um, something that I threw on this goal in with the temporary, which we haven't focused on a lot, but um, I don't think we should overlook either. Uh, so we've got the soapbox stage for that. We've got, um, there's this, there was a, there was a, few pages, I think it was a few pages anyway, dedicated to this uh, sculpture on loans program that the Public Arts uh, Commission was interested in and in, in, in making the master plan. So I, I put in a strategy for that. Um, and they also wanted in the longer term to collaborate with local national and international museums to do exhibits. So since that's sort of a, would be a temporary exhibit, I put that in our temporary goal. Um, and then there was, you know, we had a thing about making it inclusive for all people. Um, we had these three strategies already, which are about um, just the backgrounds of the type of artists that we work with and trying to make that diverse. Um, there is one about Native history. Um, I had modified this a little bit to say done by Native artists when possible. There wasn't anything that I noticed about native stuff in the public arts uh, master plan. But I think that there's plenty of room to, to do that um, for our plan. Um, the, they, the public arts master plan did include a long term, a longer term goal of having a Montpelier cultural plan. So I put that in this section about um, welcoming and inclusive backgrounds. Uh, it's not a perfect fit, but I didn't know where else to put it. And I don't know about, since it's, I don't know, uh, um, but that's something to think about if we wanna move that somewhere else or figure out a different goal related to that. Um, and then they also had a longer term goal of working with non-traditional partners. So I threw that in as a strategy there. 
uh, we had a perspective aspiration. So our first aspiration was about lots of public art. Our second aspiration was about lo supporting local artists and performers. Um, we had a goal of create opportunities for local artists. I think this actually said something slightly different before, but I changed it to make the goal better match what the strategies were about. Um, this the storefronts thing is here too, so that could be like a com you might want to just combine those or have you know like what we've done before, one strategy but tag it as oh well that's aspiration A you know or, or A and B and you know. Um, Mike knows what I'm talking about. Uh, and uh, I think I think this was our strategy from before, making facilities available. Um, this is something out of their master plan, which is uh, they want to prioritize using Vermont artists for all projects under 50,000. Um, they also have, they want, they also included in, in the public arts master plan that if it's more than 50,000, they would look at national artists. But for, as far as fitting this aspiration, I, I just put in that the part of, about the 50,000 um, for local. Um, artist and residence program is from the master plan, from their master plan. Um, collaborating with local schools for programming that features public artists is from, is from theirs. And another idea that they had was to develop a list of qualified artists to be used by businesses, developers, individuals interested in commissioning public art, which I think is a easy thing for the city to do to, to um, help local artists find work and also allows the city to kind of vet things a little bit. So that seemed like a good one. Um, and then support privately organized events. We just had, this is from us, I think. So it, this might be something that gets wrapped up in one of the other areas, but um, But it also could be something that we flesh out more because honestly, a lot of the art stuff that's happening in Montpelier that I'm the most aware of is already privately organized events like Ice on Fire and All Species Day and, and all those like artistic events that take place are um, the city, the city's working with private nonprofits um, that are actually organizing those things, Enchanted Forest. Um, so, so there's already a lot of this going on. And then uh, the last aspiration we had was uh, to help develop artistic skills and art appreciation. I think I added the art appreciation because that was something from their master plan. Um, so under that, uh, there's the one goal, or actually that's, that should be more of a strategy. I don't, I don't know what to do here actually about this. That, that's definitely more of a strategy, the art courses thing. Um, or we need to change that goal because there's yeah there's the art course strategy, um, and then these la that was something we had, and then the last two were from the public arts master plan, which is to create a volunteer program to help with events and installations, and to um, this is where I put to just periodically update the public art master plan um, as a way to continue to support art appreciation. So I don't know, there's a few like not so great fits to hammer out um, and I'm aware of that. And I trust that Mike will do some reorganization and, and totally expect that um, when we go to put this in the typical format. Uh, but with that said, does anybody have any immediate feedback? I just would say, oh, oh no, go sorry, go. no, I was just going to say thank you for doing this work, Kirby. And I don't, again, I don't have a lot of expertise in this area, but it seems all good to me. Yeah. And I was just going to go and mention that um, I think there's a lot of pieces here. And I mean, uh, uh, like you said, I'll have to fit this to our format, but I think there's a lot of, I think there things are in pretty close to the shape that they would be. So there's not a lot that um, kind of needs to be changed. I think some of them I just have to go through and define this as a policy. This is, you know, what this is talking about is a policy. So it'd be a policy to do this. And what this, this is a program, then we need a program to do this. And so I think there'd be a bunch of those types of things. But I think it's mostly there. And I think what the Planning Commission will have to 
think about is a little bit on the, especially on the starting at the top and working down with the aspirations and then the goals is, you know, um, whether we think, for example, it is our job as city government to support the development of artistic skills and artistic appreciation in the region. And I think that's just the policy question, the overarching thing. Is that something for us to do? It's, you know, there's a lot of things in the world that are good to have done. The question is whether this is going to be our job. And I think we talked about that with like economic development, having goals that uh, goals to have living wage. Um, it's a great idea. It's a great thing to have. Is it really our job as government to be dealing with living wage? Um, and so I think this, these, some of these might have that same question. Is it our responsibility to support lar- local artists and performers? Um, maybe that's yes. Maybe that's no. Um, um, it might be a yes, but one of the goals might be a no. Um, and, I, you know, actually the B, I didn't have that. The number two, I didn't have that much of an issue with. I was just grabbing that as an example. But there, there may be ones in, in here that similar to our economic development study uh, discussion, similar to some of our others that we might say it's there, but that's not really our job. Or we say, yes, these are all a job, in which case then I can go through, fit this up to our format, and we're on our way to being done with this chapter pretty quick. So thank you, Kirby. That was a, You did a great job organizing this. Uh, yeah, no problem. And, and I, I see what you mean about three. Honestly, like uh, th- this was the one where I was like a catch. It was a catch all category anyway. And I actually think that the strategies down here, which are kind of the main point and t- two out of three of those were out of the um, public arts master plan. The last two, and then the first one was just the art courses this thing is just an idea of to as just a nice thing the city can provide along with all the other recreational stuff that it already provides it would be just like a you know a little recreational program my thought is we can take some of this material and just put it other places anyway and we don't need an aspiration about developing artistic skills and art appreciation because i'm not even sure that those three things fit that very well anyway like um I'm not sure that we need a strategy to continue to update the public art master plan. Um, Probably not. Um, you know, my my thought of including it was that they they want to do this public arts commission, and to I don't know keep momentum going with that because because they they made their master plan they're they're doing a lot of new good work, so how can we support that so so i don't know if we have a strategy in here i felt like that would at least be something you know having that in the in the city plan would support those endeavors but if it's if it's if people don't feel like it's needed or it's going to ever be realistically practically useful whatever then um and i can look at how we've done it in other chapters too again that can come back to the consistency because we've talked about like the edsp we've talked about well we should update the edsp should that be something and if i was going to put a year on it i would probably go through and i would probably just to go and update the public art master plan every eight years in conjunction with the city plan update that that th- that three to five is is from the public art master plan yeah i would probably recommend to them that we look at a slightly wider window so that way because what happens with a three to five years is we're all, and we're updating the city plan every eight years then we're we're not going to have you know, it'd be nice for them to do their eight years a year before our city plan. So that way we can take their their changes, incorporate them into the new city plan. And it just builds, you know, they, they yeah. can continue to remain dovetailed together pretty well. I Reading between the lines a little bit, I think they put three to five because they had some short term goals and then they wanted to meet those. And they thought they'd meet them in two to three years and then then they wanted to update it again. But maybe after the next time they update it, they'll be on like a track for like eight years. Yeah, and we can work with them also internally on because we're trying to divide between two. Um, so we the city council, and I think I've mentioned this to, to planning commission, but for the public or anyone who might be watch watching, uh, the city plan has a strategic plan where they are looking at 18 to 24 months. So we build out a 
city council strategic plan that helps drive my work plan and it drives every department's work plan, including um, the Public Art Commission, their, their work plan. So as we build these strategic plans, um, that's really meant to be our action. So of all the things in our, you know, and what the plan is that eventually our city plan helps to drive that process. So of the everything that's in our eight year city plan, what are the things that are in this 18 month window? Because that's the that's the stuff that we've got to start getting staff time on, and we've got to start putting money and resources on, so we can implement it. Some things are short and quick, you know, uh, and other things take longer. So the goal is that we start having these these windows, and that might help them if they start thinking about things in two different pieces. What's in your short window that goes in the strategic plan of that eighteen to twenty four months, and what are the things that are in our what what do we want to accomplish in the eight years, and then we start prioritizing. So we break that eight years into four two-year chunks and try to accomplish what we can in those chunks. So that way we're, you know, checking the box. That's our whole point is to have a plan that we start checking off the things of all the things we're getting done. And hopefully by the end of the eight years, if we had five things to get done, hopefully we've gotten all five, but maybe we only got four done and we can carry that last one over to the next eight-year plan and identify what else goes in over the next eight years. Okay. Well, so, so Mike, when you, when you take this, um, yeah, I mean, I, I would be perfectly fine with you breaking up the third aspiration and relocating the things to other categories that fit um, just so that we're, you know, using our time decently here and giving Mike um some more guidance uh, about what direction to go when he goes to do his thing next. Uh, I want to ask if everyone would be fine with that would leave us with two aspirations. And so let's talk about that and maybe try to nail that down. The first aspiration being Montpelier will support public art and thoroughly integrate into our urban landscape and Montpelier will support local artists and performers. Um, do we have thoughts about those two aspirations or any aspiration that's not, that that doesn't cover? Okay. So I'm going to take that as people are. Yeah. So we're wording, content with that. wording wise, I would probably adjust. Well, I'll talk about the first one. Montpelier will have public art thoroughly integrated into the urban landscape. So what we want to do is to define it as, as a, as a, as an endpoint, a goal, a statement, a vision. That's what our vision is. As opposed to supporting, Montpelier will support public art. Is Montpelier will have public art thoroughly integrated into an urban landscape, and that that would match the form of what we are looking for. That makes sense to me. So that's for for everyone else uh, who maybe hasn't gone through all this too many times that's usually when i go through to kind of fit the format that's what i'm trying to do i won't usually go through and try to change intent too much i usually try to go through and it's just changing so that way it matches the format of the other ones um and uh and that would be the the thought behind the changes that i would do did you did you have a, a different idea of the way to frame number two, aspiration two? I don't know, I might have to think about that one a little bit more to kind of look at the goals because we, we want everything that works you know, backwards and forwards. So aspiration, the goals, you know, if we do our strategy, do we accomplish our goals? We do our goals. Do we meet our, our aspirations? And I think this one, I'll have to do a little bit more of a, a careful dive down in to see what these are, to see if we're, are we supporting artists and performers in this? Are we supporting, are we creating opportunities? Montpelier will have 
Yeah. I'll have to do a little bit. I see where this is going and the difference. These are kind of, one is kind of looking at those fixed items as far as I can tell. And I know if John was here, he'd probably go through and say too many aspirations. We can probably compress these down into one. Um, we don't really need to talk about the physical art um, statues and paintings and those things and differentiate those from the artists themselves. Or maybe, maybe that is the goal. I know John's always looking to compress them. So I, I always like to break them apart, but um, it's one I'll have to kind of do a little bit of work and maybe what we can do is I can go through and make a bunch of my tweaks and adjustments unless, unless people want to jump up and say there's some part of this they don't want to keep. Um, then I'll go through kind of make it fit the format and then we can put it on the agenda for the next meeting for everyone to kind of review and approve. I think that's a great yeah. strategy. And Kirby, thanks for <laughs> putting some things together. This is non-area strength for me. But yeah, so when, when I said I usually don't change things too much, you're right. The aspiration too, I'll probably have to change um, because I don't, I don't think that will fit, but I'll, I'll work with the, I'll start with the strategies and see what our strategies are telling me we're trying to do. Because as you said, Kirby, you took this out of their plan and tried to put them into places. So I'm going to try to look at what it is, try to say, what is this telling us, create a goal, and then look at the goals to try to create an aspiration. Um, yeah. I, I, those. I, I sense that one area that, that, that may be causing you some trouble is with planning, we don't usually directly talk about people. Is it is it because it's talking about the artists and performers? So it like is would it be would it fit better if it were rephrased to focus on supporting local art and instead of instead of the, the people part of it? In our econ in our economic development plan though, we did have a people No, the people's okay. Thing, right? Yeah, people yeah. is okay. And maybe that maybe this is exactly what you're intending is that these are all things that are used. Yeah, our, our, our top aspiration for economic development will is says Montpelier would be a great place for people in the workforce to live because we provide equal access and blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. Maybe it's not, maybe it's not, like I said, I'll, I'll take a look through and, and see if it, if, if it is about the local artists and performers and. Um, so if the first one's looking at, and that maybe that's the distinction I need to keep in my mind is aspiration uh, one aspiration a is talking about art and aspiration two is talking about the artists and performers and if that's the distinction between a and b one and two then i can that helps me to then start thinking about how i um how i see these goals policies and strategies because that that's that's a distinction and that's a good distinction and if and it certainly is perfectly fine for us to say we support the artists and we support the art and those we're thinking about those as two separate things. Obviously the artists make the art, but uh, in a lot of ways, the art itself, uh, the artists make the art and then the artists are, are done and gone and we're left with, that's why we've got these maintenance things um, that they pointed out in the master plan that were very important is a lot of times communities create art, but then there isn't a plan or a fund or anything to maintain that art and it falls into disrepair and um it it loses its effect so you really need to have funds that help support and maintain that art over time um yeah I, um one thing i'm noticing is um the, what's under i know i know i did the lettering different than normal than we normally do so um hopefully there's no confusion under what's what's uh goal c4 here the cultural plan I, I was pulling that from the other master plan. Um, 
and I put it there, but it actually probably fits under two way down here better because it's, it goes to performing art, art education, and artist support services. So those are the things that they were thinking that a cultural plan would be about. Um, and so it goes to the stuff that two is addressing aspiration two is addressing more. So that might be one to move. Mike, would it be helpful for you if we if we also went over the goals or do you feel comfortable working with what you've got there? No, I think the goals are pretty close. Um, so the, the shift that'll be in there is uh, usually the goals uh, have the maintain, evolve, transform. So we should be looking at what we're trying to do and whether we, we think we're doing a good job at it. Most of these are going to probably be evolve or transform because the city has not had a public art program. I mean, it's very recent that the plan was done and very recent that they've started working on this, although they have very active committee right now. But most mm -hmm. of these things are probably making up for stuff. So we're going to probably have a lot of improve this, expand this. Um, so those types of qualifiers, I'll reword these with those qualifiers in it. So that way we're meeting the correct format. And then the strategies will, uh, as I said, we'll, I'll have to group into whether it's a policy or a program or a project um, and kind of flesh that out in that way. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. And just a couple notes for you, Mike, I did include at the top because I know in our um, aspiration goals and strategies, we'd like to put who, like what entities are responsible for what things I went ahead and put the list of uh, things that the public arts master plan had had called out for entities responsible. So number one being the Montpelier Public Art Commission. There's probably not a lot of these that the Planning Commission will actually probably be put on um, just because of the fit. But uh, so, so, so for your for your sake, Mike, I went and put those in there to give you those ideas. And then I also noted at the bottom, which I'm sure you're probably already going to do this, but when we go to write the language for the chapter, there's a lot of lead in language, you know, that's similar to our chapter language that's already in the public art master plan. So, um, I mean, it was so similar to what we've been doing with the chapters, I would say like, um, plagiarizing is totally fine. <laughs> maybe you even, maybe I have you even no wrote stealing. it. I will steal from, steal from others. <laughs> um, well, I mean, someone, someone, some staff at the city probably wrote it, right? Uh, this was a contract. They they contracted that yeah. out. And I believe it was a um, a group out of like Wisconsin who had done a number of these across the country, and we were kind of surprised and so impressed by their their background um, that the that the city hired them, even though they were so far away. They came in for a couple of meetings and then did a lot of stuff remotely to develop the plan. They were very very good. Um. That's great. Yeah. And, and yeah, they had done a survey and they'd done like public engagement. So like, yeah, so you, we, we could feel pretty good about um, putting in some of the, the chapter type content that they used. I recall that uh, one thing that stood out to me is there was a lot of reference to Montpelier as being an, an old city that's not scared of the new or something like that. It was like, you know, if we want to, if we want to say that in the city plan, I'm happy with that. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure everyone. It Everyone is one of the nice to... things about it. One of the nice things about having somebody come in from so far away who knows absolutely nothing about the city to kind of walk in and take a, take a tour and, and just start to see things. They see things with a completely fresh set of eyes. Um, so it's interesting to kind of see some of their assessments that came out as opposed to our, our usual crop of people who work with us or who live in the state of Vermont um, because they already kind of have a preconceived notion of what Montpelier is having people come in from no from Wisconsin who've never been to the Northeast to kind of look and say, this is what we see when we come here. It was kind of interesting. Yeah, I liked it. I liked what they, um, where they were coming from. Um, and the public arts commission must've liked it too, because they, they went with it. Um, okay. Well, with, we can, uh, we can move on if everyone's happy with, 
Mike working with what he has here. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to move on on the agenda then, uh, which is to consider the minutes from July 11th. It's the last thing we have. So if everyone can pull those up real quick and I'll take a motion when you're ready. Okay, I move approval of the minutes from uh, July 10th. Is that when they were? July 11th, close. July 11th, okay. Okay, so we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, looks like there's uh, four of us left. Um, do we, uh, okay, those in favor of approving the minutes say aye? Aye. aye. Any opposed? Okay. July 11 minutes approved. And uh, what's the only thing left is adjournment, unless anyone has anything else for next meeting. Actually, as, as, as a thing to wrap up just real quick, Mike, you said you would have for us next time, you would have um, an updated version of the arts and culture. Do you think you will have any of the other chapters for the next meeting? I probably won't promise to have those. Um, <clears throat> getting in a lot better place right now. You know, unfortunately, some of the zoning stuff is really dragging into a bunch of my time. I, I mentioned the appeals that we have two appeals in court right now that are in the environmental court. And I also have another one that another decision that was appealed to go to the DRB. So um, as what happens with appeals to the DRB of administrator decisions is the administrator, the zoning administrator hands them off to me and I become the neutral third party to go through and evaluate whether or not the zoning administrator made an error and present the case to the DRB um, to usually defend the zoning administrator. And that's probably what I'll be doing in this case, but I'll have to write up a staff report and do that. So unfortunately, um, getting a lot of stuff that's kind of um, dragging a little bit of stuff that's in the way of being able to get a bunch in. But I, I'm glad I'm going to get to meet with SE group so we can start getting them to work. I think that'll that'll start to be some good opportunities where we can start to have some conversations about um, having them come in and meet with you guys. I don't expect that they'll be ready for the next meeting. Um, I'll, I'll ask them if they want to have a kickoff meeting just to talk about process of what they're going to do and how they're going to run things. So maybe that will be on the agenda. Um, but I would expect them maybe the second meeting in August, maybe the first meeting in September where they'll start to sit down and say, okay, we're building a template. Basically how the, how the RFP was laid out is they'll build the template. So, we know we're going to have 10 to 12 chapters. So they're going to build one chapter out and then they're going to, so usually historically, typically we've grabbed the historic resources because it's a straightforward chapter, not a lot of complication. So we'll probably grab the historic resources again, lay that out, go and say, this is what a typical storyboard page for one chapter is going to look like. We can all go through and review it and say, that's good or change this, change that. This is what we want. Then we can start giving them the rest of the chapters, all the stuff that we've been working on, housing, transportation, uh, energy, economic development, uh, arts. We'll have the arts chapter. Um, and then hopefully, as I've been, because I have been working on the community services, I just don't have the approved version. They have final approved from cemeteries. Um, we have drafts to the cemetery commission, drafts to the recreation committee and drafts to the senior center advisory committee um, so i'm waiting to get finals on those and then we'll have community services ready um, so we've got a bunch of chapters that we can start moving forward getting them put into the thing and once they're in the online version then we can start going to the public so we can kind of get a couple of things going all at the same time we can start getting public input on the first sets of chapters once they're put online 
um, while we're working on the rest of them. And hopefully throughout the winter, we can hammer hammer these out. But if I can stop getting permits appealed to court. So, okay. okay. Though that, that all sounds great. The, the longer term plan sounds perfect. Uh, so for next time, I might try to get, throw something together for the solar shading stuff. Cause it's something that we're going to need to do. We need to j just to make use of our, of our meeting time a little bit. Um, I have some guilt about having such short summer meetings. Maybe I shouldn't have guilt. Maybe people getting to more of their summer to enjoy is not so bad. <laughs> well, a lot of um, don't, don't feel bad. I mean, the city council goes to one meeting a month during the summer. Um, there's a number of committees that will skip meetings during the summer. So we shouldn't feel guilty if, if our meetings are shorter or a little bit, um, you know, yeah. or if we were to vote to, to skip them all together, but it would, yeah, yeah, I don't feel I don't regularly. feel too terrible. It's low, it's low key, low key guilt. Um, but but like I was saying, I might try to get something put together to get the solar shading moving. Um, just giving people a heads up about that. All right. Well, do we have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Motion from Ariane. Do we have a second? I second. Okay, those in favor of adjournment say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, see you guys later.